Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I want to help you travel smarter by showing you how Apple's trade-in program works for Macs and MacBooks. Now you may have seen my video where I go over how the trade-in program works for Apple's iPhone, and although the process is similar, there are some key differences. But first, for those of you who don't know and just click this video because of the title, let me quickly explain what Apple's trade-in program is. Essentially, Apple's trade-in program lets you take older Apple products and trade them in for newer Apple products for Apple credit. Now, let me get that out of the way. They're not giving you cash, so you can't take an old iPhone and trade it in and just get cash. It's Apple credit toward a new Apple purchase. So if you're looking at trading in your MacBook Pro, for example, you're gonna be trading that in and get Apple credit. They're not gonna actually give you cash. That's just something to know. If you're looking for cash, you're gonna to wanna to try something like eBay or some other service. But going back to the Apple trade-in program, because there are some advantages to using it. So it's essentially incentivizing you to buy new Apple products by giving you a little bit of credit for that old Apple product for purchase toward a new Apple product. So let me show you how the Apple trade-in program works with a MacBook. So we'll take my 2015 MacBook Pro and we're gonna trade that in for a 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro. Now, what really matters here is the older device. It doesn't really matter what you're trading it in for. So it's not a real direct trade. You're just getting credit back. So the newer device, just Think about that as whatever new device you want to get, but let's really focus on the older device. The first step is to go to Apple's trade-in page on their site, go to Mac if you're trading in a MacBook as I am in this example, and you'll get a list of varying prices for trade-ins. The devil is in the details though, which is why you should keep scrolling to select your specific device. All right, so I'm just gonna pause right here and say one of the key differences between trading in a MacBook Pro or a MacBook, for example, versus an iPhone is the amount of time that the entire process takes. It's gonna take you about two to four weeks for the entire process when it comes to a MacBook. So you're gonna to wanna to plan accordingly, like if you're gonna buy this as a gift. So if you're using the trading program to buy somebody an Apple gift and you need that credit, just keep in mind that it's gonna take about two to four weeks. And the main reason for that is Apple doesn't handle the actual trade-ins. They outsource that to a company called Fobio. So they're the ones that inspect your old MacBook. They're the ones that come up with the estimates and then give you the newer updated estimate once they have the product in hand. It's a little bit slower of a process because of that third party. It's not like the iPhone process where it's basically going right back to Apple. They take a look at it and then they give you your credit and you're good to go. So I just wanted to get that out of the way in case you've got a schedule to keep, you've got a birthday coming up or some holiday. Just know that it's going to take about a month. All right, now jumping back into the process. Now you can trade in a couple of different laptops using the Apple trading program, but usually people use it for Apple products. So in this case with our MacBook Pro, it's pretty straightforward. Click Apple and enter a serial number. A lot of times your device will just pop up, but if it doesn't, you'll be asked to verify the type of Mac, the year, the processor, and any other relevant specs. In my case, I wanted to see what I could get for a 2015 MacBook Pro. And my initial quote was $570 on an i7 2.8 gigahertz 15 inch MacBook Pro with a 512 gigabyte hard drive. So that's not bad for a five year old MacBook Pro. I'm getting about 20 to 25% back on a five year old laptop. Not bad. So let's call this day one of the process, getting that initial estimate online. Now, another thing I want to add is there is another way to initiate the Apple trade-in program, and that's when you're buying a new Apple product. You're going to see that close to checkout. So as you're buying a new, let's say, MacBook Pro, it's going to ask you if you're trading in an old MacBook Pro. Now, the reason that I don't recommend you use this and that I recommend that you use the separate trade-in program and get your trade-in credit first is because if you use the trade-in program during a purchase of a new product, then you're basically locked in. So they'll give you an estimate for your, let's say old MacBook Pro, you'll buy your new MacBook Pro, and then you'll send your old MacBook Pro off and they're gonna evaluate it. And they might not give you the price that they quoted online. So you might be counting on that credit. You might be budgeting out according to that amount of credit that you thought you were gonna get. And now you're gonna get less credit and now you've already bought this MacBook Pro. So your budget is all messed up or maybe you spent more than you wanted to. So it's better to avoid that whole situation and just go with the trade-in program separately. If you do that, then you can get your online estimate. And as you'll see, you'll be able to send your MacBook Pro off for evaluation. They will evaluate it and then you will get it back with the actual price and the amount of credit that they're gonna give you. That way you know for certain, I've got this amount of credit, 
to go towards this new Apple product. If you do that when you're purchasing new, you don't have that flexibility. If the trade-in credit isn't really important to you, then you might as well just start this process when you're buying a new Apple product. But if you really want that credit, if that credit is important to you, if you're shopping around for the best price, then go ahead and do the trade-in program separately. All right, so now you've got your online estimate. Assuming that you accept it, you can just reject it, of course, and keep your old MacBook Pro. But assuming that you accept that offer, Fobio is then going to send you a box with prepaid shipping to pack in your old MacBook Pro and send it to them for physical evaluation. Now, if you do decide to do the trade-in with a new purchase, then you can get your new MacBook sent to you and then use it, transfer everything from your old MacBook, and then pack up your old MacBook and send it off to get the final credit. Now, before you send off your old MacBook, you're going to want to erase the hard drive. Now, Apple has a good article on how to do this. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But essentially, it involves turning off Find My Mac and wiping your hard drive. That process takes about three to five business days. And then you receive another email from Fobio letting you know that your trade-in process has begun. And they'll begin sending you a prepaid shipping box to pack in your old MacBook. Once you get the trade-in box, let's say this is about day five, which has all the packing materials you'll need. You've got less than 21 days to send it back to Fobio with your MacBook Pro inside for them to evaluate. I say less than 21 days since the day count starts when you first confirmed your quote, not from when you get your shipping box. Keep that in mind. Once you get in your trading box, let's say on day five, you'll have all the shipping materials you need to send in your old MacBook Pro, and you've got 21 days to send it back, but it's really less than 21 days and the reason for that is that 21 day count for when you've got to send your evaluation product back to Fobio is that that day starts when they originally gave you the quote so when you accept the estimate quote the day count starts there and since it takes them about five days to get that box to you and a couple more days for you to send that box out it's really not 21 days so it's probably going to be like 15 days so just keep that in mind that you don't really have that full 21 days or at least that the count starts on when you accepted their offer, not when you get the box at the mail. Once you get the box and you've packed up your old MacBook Pro, it's time to send it back. You're going to use this through whatever service the shipping label is. It might be through the post office or a third party shipping company, but whatever it is, just send it back using the appropriate shipping service based on that label. It's also a good idea to get a tracking number no matter how you sent the shipment, which will also be included. It takes about five business days for Fobio to get your device. So let's call this day 10 of the process. So now they have your device and they're going to physically evaluate it to make sure that it's working and it looks like how you described it when you originally started the trade-in program. But in my case, when they got my MacBook Pro, they saw what I thought were just cosmetic defects on the screen that could be buffed out or cleaned off, they said that that was going to reduce their estimate from $570 to $200. Now, if you don't like the final quote that they give you once they have their product in hand, you can always reject it and they'll just send you back your old Mac Pro and then you can try your luck on eBay or some other website. In my case, I decided to accept the quote. So $200 back for a 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro. And then you're notified that it's going to take them about three to five business days for them to give you your gift card. So it's day 17 now and they've emailed you a gift card. They don't send the gift cards physically. Almost always they're going to be electronic gift cards. So you want to hold on to that email until you use it. The gift card doesn't have an expiration date that I could find and Apple gift cards in general don't have expiration dates. So I'm assuming that it's sort of open-ended, but I'm guessing if you're using the trade-in program, you're probably getting ready to buy a new Apple product and you're probably not going to hold on to that gift card for too long anyway. So that's basically the Apple trade-in program for a MacBook Pro. I sent in my 2015 15-inch MacBook Pro, was quoted $570 online. That was readjusted to $200 due to some damage to the screen. I ended up accepting that offer, sending in my old MacBook Pro, then getting a gift card and using that to apply to a new Apple purchase. For you, the process is also going to be pretty much the same. So is it worth it? Is it worth using the Apple trade-in program for your Mac or MacBook Pro? I'd say the program generally works better for older iPhones. And the reason is, is when you trade in an older iPhone, you tend to get a bigger percentage of the original cost back. And it's a much faster process 
since it seems to be going directly through Apple. There's no Phobio in between. There's no third party in between. So it's a much faster process. And also with iPhones, you tend to get back a greater percentage. So for, let's say, in my previous example, in a previous video, I used an iPhone 6S to upgrade to an iPhone 11. That iPhone 6S was the last product that Apple was accepting in the trading program. It was basically the last model year of iPhone that they were going to accept. And I got back 24 Five, about 20-25% of the original cost of that iPhone back. Now just for fun I took my 16 inch 2019 MacBook Pro with 2 terabytes, a 2.3 gigahertz 8 core i9 and a 32 gigabyte memory. So it's a pretty specced out 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro and that goes for about $3,400 new. So I thought hey let me try and see what Apple would give me if I use the trading program online. And the quote came back to $1,670. Now that's a pretty steep drop off from a brand new product to lose 50%, sort of like buying a car. As soon as you buy a car and drive it off the lot, it's just lost a huge percentage of its original value. So I went to go check on eBay and my MacBook Pro comes back at being around $3,000 I could probably get on eBay. So I would say for newer products, maybe checking eBay is probably better. And you should always, before you use the Apple trading program, check eBay too, because you might get a better price or some site like that. And not to mention that you don't just get Apple credit there, you get actual money that you can use for anything. But if you're gonna be trading in your MacBook or Mac or more expensive Apple product, I definitely take a look on eBay. For things like phones, where people tend to upgrade those pretty quickly, those tend to lose their value pretty quickly over time. So I would suggest that the Apple trading program probably works better there. But it doesn't hurt to get an online quote in either case. So it's worth checking the Apple trading program price to see what they give you online. And it's worth checking on eBay as well. But just keep in mind with the max that they might adjust the price like they did in my case. So you might not be getting as much credit as you were hoping for. And then you might have to go back to some third party site like eBay to trade in your MacBook. And if that's the case, it's going to take even longer than the 20 ish days that it already takes. So just keep that in mind. Again, if you're purchasing something that you need right away, if you're purchasing something for a gift, you just want to keep in mind that it's going to take longer with a Mac than it's going to take with an iPhone if you use the Apple trade-in program. If you have any questions about Apple's trade-in program when it comes to iPhones, I'll link to my video down under the subscribe button. I'll also link to another video I did detailing the details of the Apple trade-in program, answering your most common questions when it comes to trading in Macs and iPhones and all of that. So I'll leave a link to that also down below. And if you have any questions about using the Apple trade-in program after watching this video for Macs, MacBooks, MacBook Pros, let me know down in the comments. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. So it's essentially, so it's essentially event, so it's, so it's, so it's essentially incent, so it's essentially incent, so it's essentially incentivizing you to buy new Apple products.